Hi everyone, my name is Colin and welcome to the first episode of Anju Road, a cooking show where we're going to taste our way around the world with our mission, well that's to discover culture through food. So let's get started. All right, so before we get to actually cooking, we do need to do a little bit of upkeep first. And today I want to talk specifically, probably one of the most fundamental and basic things you should know as a home cook, as a chef, and that's keeping your knife sharp. Now, I have a little bit of a confession to make. This is my personal knife, and I have not sharpened this for the purpose of making this video in probably like three, four, maybe five months. Now, all the chefs out there are going to crucify me for this, but I just wanted to make a point and show you guys kind of what it's like actually using a knife that is not sharp. Now, this is a Shun Sora chef's knife. It's just a six inch knife. Um, I can talk a little bit about the sizing later and why I prefer shorter knives. Um, but this is a Japanese style chef's knife. So it's a very thin blade. Uh, and I actually do prefer this. Everyone has their preferences. But even though this will be sharper and will probably cut easier than most like big, thick German style knives, even while it's a little bit more dull, I want to show you guys something. I have a tomato and an onion here, and you guys have probably seen in those videos where they can simply just slice, you know, pull the knife, drag it through the tomato, and keep going. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start this knife, and um, okay. Well, let me let me try that again. Let me let me hold it down so there's a little bit of pressure here, and I'm just gonna start slicing. As you can see, not much edge here. If I push on the tomato it literally doesn't even start cutting so I can literally so with a little bit of pressure it will start slicing but you shouldn't have to slice a tomato like a steak that's not how this is supposed to work and if I were to try and I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure here just so I can get myself a layer and obviously all the chefs are gonna be horrified with the way I'm cutting this but if I put my hand here just to hold it oh there it goes if I start sawing it no it's it broke so there's clearly no way that this is a sharp knife. So what I wanna show you guys is how to sharpen your knife properly. Now, I have had a little bit of experience with this, and the best way to do that is with a whetstone. So the pull-through grinders, the pull-through sharpeners, I really don't recommend them, especially not if you're using a Japanese style knife. They're just, they're just gonna destroy your blades. Um, if you have a knife that came with a sharpener and it's like a specific set, maybe but really if you guys want to sharpen your knives the best way to do that is to get a whetstone this is a 1000 uh, 6000 grit sandstone so it's one on each side i'll show you guys this a little bit later but one one more example if you guys don't believe me one more example i want to show you guys another thing onions people love onions but people don't love crying from onions and the best way to reduce the amount of tears you're going to get from onions is by not rupturing as many cells and what i mean by that is when you slice through an onion you're actually cutting through the fibers and splitting that and when that hits the oxygen in the air you actually start tearing up the thing is with a sharp knife you will rupture less cells because you're slicing right through it but with a dull knife, you will just be jamming your knife through this and crushing your way through the onion, rupturing a lot more cells. So for the sake of science, I will be cutting through this onion and I want you guys to listen. I want you guys to hear, one, how much effort it takes to cut through something like this, which if you are putting effort into cutting things, that's how you're gonna get hurt. So listen carefully. So I'm gonna take the onion and I'm gonna cut You should never be putting that much pressure into this. And it's almost embarrassing how dull this blade is. It, it is still sharp enough, obviously, to cut through a tomato and things like that. But you guys heard how I just crunched through that onion. You can actually see the fibers of the onion kind of ripping apart here. And I'm already starting to tear up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit. I'm gonna show you guys how to set up your whetstone for sharpening. I'll show you guys some of the techniques and then we'll revisit this. We'll see if I can get the tomato slice. I wanna show you guys the difference it'll make and I'll explain why it's safer to use a sharp knife. 
All right, guys, so first things first, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab a tub of room temperature water, anything that will be deeper than the whetstone itself. This is the whetstone that I'm talking about. It's got the red side, which is 1000 grit. And then if we flip it over, we've got the white side, which is 6000 grit, which is more for finer sharpening. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna toss that right in your tub of water and let it sit out at room temperature on the counter for about 10 minutes. You really want it to be wet. It is a wet stone after all. And once that's set, we will move to the table. So now that we're over at the table, we have our knife, obviously, that we're gonna be sharpening. We have our whetstone sitting in water. And then we have this thing. This is actually the whetstone pedestal that we're gonna be using. This is actually from Kingstone. It's a Japanese company. And just for the record, uh, just so you never forget, when I was first started sharpening, I set up a little cheat sheet on the bottom of this thing. So I always remember the red side was 1000 grit. The white side was 6000. All right, so what we're gonna do is pretty simple here. You take your whetstone, which yes, should be basically soaking wet when you take it out. You want to leave as much water on there as possible. Not soaking, but enough to obviously start the grinding process. We're going to flip it red side up first because we're going to take off the most material on the first time. Really important to always dry your hands when you're doing this. You do not want to be slipping while sharpening your knife. That would be very bad. So how you're going to figure out the angle on the knife, it's always about 15 to 25 degrees depending on the knife you have. So what you're going to do is you're simply just going to place the knife flat on the whetstone and then you're just going to curl up the edge a little bit there's some more specific videos out there about how to specifically find the edge but once you find the edge for your specific knife it'll be a much easier at that point there's a couple different ways of doing this but i actually start grinding in two ways so one of them is a completely horizontal pull so what happens is you're basically just smoothing out the edge one piece at a time and you kind of just work your way down the edge towards the tip of the blade and then you start to do your long pulls so basically what is happening here is you're roughing up the edge of the surface at one specific point at a time to just make sure that you're getting the roughest material out of it and then you're pulling it through and remember when you're pushing and pulling vertically it's really important that you push down only on the pull back because if you push down on the forward you're actually going to dig your knife into the stone not so good you can really ruin your edge that way i actually chipped my knife the first time i was sharpening it because i didn't know what i was doing you'll see there's a lot of marks on my knife and stuff like that because this was basically my first knife that i taught myself how to sharpen with and so it's basically my beater knife it's always important to add a little bit more water if you feel that the whetstone is getting a little bit dry because you do actually need that water there to make it work. So once you're ready, you flip over the knife, you find your angle again, and then you start doing the same thing. Ideally, the same amount of pulls on both sides in exactly the same patterns, but you can get pretty close with this. So that's basically it for the red side or the low grit side which is a thousand grit in this case and basically what you're doing is you're trying to remove the most material possible here before moving on to the finishing grinding once you feel comfortable with your rough patch on this guy what you're going to do is you're going to flip the stone over to the white side and again keep that muck on there it's really good to just kind of work it out here and the white stone is going to feel like it's not really doing anything at first and you're going to try and figure out but the more you do it basically what you're doing is you're just polishing the edge essentially it's such a fine grit. 6,000 might be too much for a lot of people. You could probably do like 1,000, 4,000 or 1,000, 3,000. Um, but I like 1,000, 6,000 because it basically just refines that edge. And essentially what you're looking for here is this polished edge. And if you do it right, you'll see that there's actually just like a strip of light here at the bottom of my blade. That's my new finished edge. And in this Japanese knife specifically, this is a dual sided, you know, a V edge. Um, some Japanese knives only have one edge, so you got to be careful with that. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just feeling the knife where it is on both sides and I'm just adjusting my edge accordingly. So I'll touch on one side, make sure it's sharp, and then I'll flip the other side. If it's not sharp anymore, I'll go back because I've curled it over. So I know this is a little bit hard to explain over video, but hopefully you get the idea. Obviously it does take some practice, um, but once you start to get the hang of it, then you'll see that you can start building a new edge on your knife. And we are back just like that after only about five minutes, maybe six minutes of sharpening. I wanna show you guys what has happened to our knife. First of all, apologies for the harsh key light. Uh, my fill light just died. So we're just gonna roll with it. So as you guys can see, I have my plate of fruit here. Um, and I just wanna show you guys the difference. Again, I 
sharpened as you guys saw on screen for probably three to four minutes um, just kind of touched up at the end last one after recording and uh, i was doing some test cuts here and i just want to show you guys the difference this is literally five minutes later i'm not going to touch it and as you guys remember if we just put it the knife through you guys can see that just like that just literally just dragging it through can create these whoops <laughs> can create these mostly paper thin slices so um, without touching it you know you can literally just slide your knife right through it i'm barely applying even pressure here and it just goes right through it as you guys saw earlier um, we had mentioned you know cutting the tomato skin wise and i was dragging the skin along not anymore it literally just slides through if i just push i do like one quick motion literally right through there's no pressure required and that is why it's so important to keep your knives sharp because you use less pressure when you're cooking if you've got this knife that you can easily to i'm, I'm sitting down by the way for this first episode my uh, my camera lens is not wide enough for me to be standing up while doing this so i apologize but when you're cutting you can literally just use the thinnest strokes and you don't need to put any pressure and it's way safer for you to do it that way than like having to really like every step you know that's just dangerous you should not be doing that um i'm not a quick chopper but you know when you're chopping and you're doing quicker things um obviously having a knife that you can do this without having to like throw it down every time is obviously safer and then we have the onions but if you guys can see quickly again now this time instead of crunching through if you guys just listen I banged my elbow on the thing, but if you listen, just nice slivers of onions. No need to do that. It's cutting right through them. It's not rupturing anything, and it just makes for a better chopping experience. You can obviously still go through if you want to dice them. I'm obviously baking like really thin juliennes. I've never cut while sitting down. This is an odd experience. But anyways, you guys can see, you guys can get really fine slices here. And there is a little bit of onion in the air, um, but I'm not crying from it. So um, if you guys obviously cut it differently, super simple, super soft. I don't even need to be holding the onion. It literally just goes through. Um, so yeah, obviously I'm just making a mess now. I'm gonna have to make a salad out of this or something. But I just wanted to show you guys how different it is and it only took about five minutes. Now, you guys might not have a sharpener at home. I'm just gonna move this mess out of the way. <laughs> now, you guys might not have a whetstone at home and that's fine. You guys might only have a blade dragger as I don't even know what you call those, the sharpeners that you just pull through and that's fine. But if you guys wanna step up your game, you really should invest in a whetstone. So the 1,000, 6,000 grit whetstone that I showed you guys is a really great investment because you get two in one, you don't need separate whetstones, you just flip it over and it's really cheap it's not that expensive so you go on amazon you can get them from anywhere from like 20 to 50 bucks and they usually come with a base um this brand is from kingstone so i use these ones my friend kyle actually gave this to me so if you can get one from a friend who doesn't use it anymore or literally just borrow it from them once every two months or so you know two three months whenever you guys do it if you guys are cooking a lot you might need to do it once every month or two but usually for most people you know a good sharpening once a year once every six months is fine if you're not cutting with it all the time again german knives versus japanese knives a little bit different sharpening times japanese knives you do need to sharpen them more often just because of the thinner blade um, but that we can get into that in a different episode i just wanted to give you guys a quick high level uh sharpening guide with a whetstone if you guys want me to dive deeper on this i can please let me know in the comments down below and i can even show you guys how to flatten your whetstone if you guys have never done that um because obviously this gets grounded down over time so um there's another tool if you want that you can literally grind your whetstone down on and i can explain that in a different video if you guys want so that about wraps up this video if you guys felt like you learned something or you have any questions obviously please leave a comment down below hit the like button subscribe if you guys want to see more from me in the future because i have have some really exciting series planned for this channel i'll give you guys a bit of a sneak peek uh we're going to be doing something i had an idea maybe something like wednesday worldwide or worldwide wednesday something like that where we're basically going to spin a globe pick a country and cook their national dish i think that'll be really exciting and it will really allow us to uh, explore the world of cooking and different cuisines and it's something that i personally really love i love exploring different cultures through their food that's how i 
learn. Um, I've traveled around the world and every time I go, I try to find the local places that, you know, the tourists don't go and just try their food. I find it really, really inspiring. And um, it, I just want to share that with you guys. So if you guys want to come along on the journey, uh, hit subscribe and uh, let me know where you're from and what your national dish is. And maybe it'll be featured in an episode. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.